1967, I went to America on a Harkness Fellowship, which gave me two years to work and paint in America. And my wife and daughter and I installed ourselves in the penthouse of the Chelsea Hotel, which was a, a, a wild bohemian 60s hotel, which had rock musicians. Janis Joplin was there and uh, Jimi Hendrix and quite an incredible... Uh, collection of uh, extreme people and in a sense America was starting to fall apart the Vietnam was starting to really split the country America was seeably having a nervous breakdown there seemed to be an incredible duality the evening news at night would spew like lava images of Vietnam and old and young not really being reconciled and black and white not being reconciled I was drinking a lot. It was a very, very wild year. Rock and roll seemed to be blazing at all hours of the night. And the second year, I, I conceived the idea. I naively still believed that a work of art, a, a powerful Guernica-type work of art, if you could produce a picture which was so anti-war, so repugnant, that it would shake the complacency and shake people out of war. And I produced this picture called The American Dream, which started off with a, um, what I dreamed of, a tranquil, Eden-like Pacific Island, um, peaceful landscape. And then it moves slowly and inevitably to a kind of apocalyptic, cathartic uh, heart attack or breakdown which I was imminently moving towards and the country was moving towards. It's a very, very powerful picture in there were sirens and it had music to it, recordings of, of uh, television recording. I mean, it was just uh, using every possible medium arrived at a point where I couldn't hold New York any longer or this picture. Marlborough refused to show it. They thought it was too socially, um, t too much involved with, uh, with politics and politics and art don't happily mix. So I fled. I just got on an airplane and I left the picture there and eventually brought it out to Australia and showed it and it's in the Western Australian Gallery now. Sort of a, uh, sort of not but the 60s at that stage was experimental and it was liberating. There was a lot of, lot of uh, uh, dope being taken and a lot of uh, adventure. I mean, it was a wonderful party, really.